Here we have a used 2019 Mercedes-Benz GLS 63 AMG. This one comes in iridium silver metallic and then we get black leather interior. Now the powertrain consists of a 5.5 liter bi-turbo V8 engine, made it with a seven speed automatic transmission. And that gives us 577 horsepower, 561 pound feet of torque. And then this one has, I think a little over 65,000 miles. But as we come to the front end here, LED headlamps along with LED daytime running lights. And I love just the styling, just for the body of this AMG here. I love having the big emblem there and then the AMG badging. Just a little bit of road rash on the front here and a bigger kind of scratch there. But for the most part, it's held up very nicely. Now this is one of my favorite parts about this vehicle. We get these nice 22 inch forged wheels. Look fantastic. Fixed running boards here. Passive keyless entry on all four doors. And over here, door handle, power door lock controls. We do get a power headrest, as well as power seat back, power seat bottom. And then memory seat functions are here. And you can just, and then hold the one you want to set it to. You get three different settings to choose from. I love that kind of carbon fiber look going on there as well. And just a very expensive looking door panel for the most part. Now over here, we do have our power mirror controls. We can pick a side and adjust with this dial here. And then we can power fold those mirrors as well. And then the blind spot monitor is that yellow triangle. We do get a nice Harman, Ka Harman Kardon sound system, excuse me. And then one touch automatic up and down windows on all four doors, window lock there. And then this is to open your third row windows. So if you can see those folding out there, one touch open and close. And we also have a power lift gate as well. Headlamp controls are here. There's auto and the corners are there. And that's all the way on. Then we do have our rear fog lights here. And then we do have an electronic parking brake, which you press to engage and then pull up to disengage. Then we do have nice sport pedals there. We're gonna pop that hood for later. Latches right here. And then we do have a power tilt and telescope steering wheel and it can get lost. We have three stalks pretty close over here. So just be careful of that. And then there is our seat itself. And I love just how snug and sporty the seat looks and it feels nice as well. And with this kind of mileage, it's held up very nicely. But I have that seat up front adjusted for someone of my size being six foot three with longer legs. So let's go ahead and check this out but first love the rear blind here big plus and i love that it goes side to side instead of having to pull it up from the bottom i feel like it covers up both of those panes there let's go ahead and hop in here now these seats are pretty adjustable and there's a lot going on i'll kind of get into that later but we can lean the seat back this one's up a little bit so when I lean it back, not terrible leg room, and I like that I could fit my knees right in here, but just lacking a little bit there. AC vents on the sides and the bottom, which is big plus there. And we do get the three-stage heated seats for the outboard seats. And then we can adjust our rear AC climate controls. We can turn temperature there, and then we can turn the auto mode on there, and then we can adjust the auto mode off by adjusting that fan speed, then we have a nice big off button there and we can use that to turn on and off. And then I like that we can adjust where the fan, or where the air is coming from and the fan's there. But this middle seat, of course, fold that down. Cup holders are here. And I have the third row up. So not a ton of leg room back there, but not bad. Then you have cup holders back there. Love the roof. Kind of get that microfiber suede feel. And then dome lights back there. AC vent. We can hang a hanger, maybe two metal ones on this little hook here. But we also get seat back pockets on both sides, which is a big plus. But these seats are extremely bulky. And I feel like that takes some of the room up, but also it's just not very this isn't meant to be a a three-row suv in my opinion unless you have five kids 
but a shorter adult could certainly fit back there no problem and then i like this feature if you hit this it'll fold flat and then it'll tumble and for whatever reason i don't know if that's a, that's a memory seat setting or whatever but when i did it on that right side it immediately moved that seat up but just now i did it on the left side did the same thing so that was weird but it's cool to be able to do that and then you can also power fold from either side this third row and that'll fold flat so pretty cool there and then you do have to manually put this one back up but it does sense when you do put it up because then that passenger seat moves back But coming around the back end here, we do get our LED tail lamps. And that's just a menacing exhaust here. We have a little, we ran into something there, but just a menacing exhaust. And again, for the mileage on this one, this is not bad at all. But opening this lift gate here, this mat was actually down. So they obviously didn't use this third row a lot, but I'll show you what that looks like. So that's how it was before I folded the seats up and that gives you that extra space. And then you can lean your second row back a little bit more and tons of cargo space with the third row down. So I'm impressed by that. And we do have the side pocket here. And I like that we can move this up and down as well. Underneath here, lift this. There's your spare tire with jacks underneath. So again, this is a usable vehicle, especially if you want something that's super fast. It's just not a, it's not a Chrysler Pacifica. It's not a Honda Odyssey. You don't have that same kind of usability there, but if you need the third row, it's available to you, especially if you have smaller people back there, or if you just want to use it for extra cargo space. But here to the front passenger seat, Pretty much same adjustability as that driver's side. And I like that we have the netted pockets on the side here. But all those controls are there. And again, you get that memory seat functionality. Lockable glove compartment here. Still have the owner's manuals for this one. But now to my favorite part about this thing, that's underneath the hood. And there's that handcrafted 5.5 liter bi-turbo V8. Just a great sound. But now let's go ahead and hop in the driver's seat. Now the steering wheel here, I love the leather. And I feel like this is Alcantara, but very thin. Not a lot of padding here, but I like that because it makes it that much easier to grip while you're driving down the road. But to the radio here, we do have our AM, FM, satellite, internet radio, all of that. And then we do get Bluetooth audio as well. And then vehicle settings are right in here. So we can adjust the time. Then if you go in here, ambient lighting, you can adjust that. A bunch of stuff. I mean, like most Mercedes, it's there's so much you can do with it, it's crazy. But here's our navigation system here. Now, if you go through the navigation, you can actually go through different settings, zoom in, zoom out, zoom out, excuse me. And the screen does not blink like that. That's just how the camera's picking it up. But down here, we do have quick shortcuts, so I can hit that car there, and that'll bring up those vehicle settings again. And then the media, navigation, radio, all that. So if you don't want to use this knob here, you can use these buttons a little bit. Then you can also use this as a mouse if you wanna do that as well. You'll see it'll adjust through that, which it takes some getting used to, but 
it kind of grows on me. And in the system settings here, you can change your language, the display, and then you can reset a lot of this too. But in that language, you can go in there. And if you have, if you don't want to have it on English, you have several different options. Don't want to change that though, because I'll never be able to get back. But we do have a CD drive here, and this is a volume knob, so we can turn the volume up and down, and then we can just hit the button to cut the system off and reset it if we ever need to do that for whatever reason. But we have three-stage heated cooled seats for the driver front passenger, auto stop toggle is there, and then we have parking sensors we can cut off, and then you hit this button here, and then it'll pull up your, your drive modes there. And speaking of drive modes, you have several that you can adjust to. So Sport Plus, you have your slippery mode, and then you have your sport, comfort, and then your individual mode you can set there. And it's crazy how quickly that exhaust changes the note there based on where you turn that. And then you can also adjust your suspension as well. And then you can raise the vehicle too. But you hit this button here and that's how we can go into our manual mode and then our traction controls here. And I do like, this is one of my favorite features. First of all, you can stow all this away, but we can either cool or heat these cup holders here and it'll change color based on what it's set to. So you know if it's set on the cold setting or if it's set on the hot setting. Now over here, dual zone automatic climate controls for the front. So we can change that and then the little indicator on the outside shows us or we can see it on the bottom of the screen there. And then you can change, if you have your auto mode on, you can set the airflow and then cut that down there to turn that off. And then here's where you control your fan direction. AC toggle, defrosters, then your max AC is there. But to the shifter, pull down for drive, pull up for reverse, and then you can just tap down for neutral, press P for park. Now the center console here, pretty good storage. And then we do have a spot for this removable tray. We can slide that back and forth. And then reading lights are here. And then we also have our power sunroof. So we get that dual pane there, hit it once for the sun shades, hit it a second time, we can slide that roof all the way back. But there's a view of the back of the vehicle from up here. And sunglasses holder here. But back to the steering wheel. We do have those paddle shifters in manual mode that we can adjust again. And then here is where we go through all of our settings for that center part of the gauge cluster. So from here, you go into the settings and then you can go to the vehicle hit that okay button here and then we can control all of this so if you want to turn the automatic door lock on off whatever you have that capability and then your driver assist you can control that too and we do have the cruise control so we can set that there brake assist attention assist all of that and then we can adjust the gap right here for the cruise. But we'll test it out on the test drive. The windshield wiper controls are here. That's for the back wiper. It's just on and off. And then the front wiper, we have the intermittent modes in low and high. And then on the side, we can push in for the front wiper fluid. And if you pull this down, that'll be for your rear wiper fluid. And then high beam toggle there when the lights are on, you can flash here. Finally, there's our push button start. And then there's the key fob. But now to the fun part, let's go ahead and take this GLS 63 AMG out on the road for a quick test drive. So starting the test drive in this GLS 63 AMG, my goodness, just an incredible sound from the exhaust 
great power output. I mean, you have a 5.5 liter bi-turbo V8. It's fast, it's gonna be fast. Love the shifts as well. Just a, a crazy sound from this exhaust. Again, for this to be a, a larger SUV. And I love how the manual mode gives you full control. I mean, it tells you when to shift up, but that's really up to you. Just so fast. I'm gonna put in the automatic mode now, dial in the comfort, and then we're gonna test out this cruise control. So I like that you have so many settings for, I have the lane keeping assist system on now, but I love that you have down there different settings that you can adjust the gap. It's not just three settings like in most vehicles. You have like 120 feet, 100, 100 feet, 80 feet, all of that. So very, very particular in terms of just how much distance you wanna leave between the vehicle in front of you and yourself. You could even go all the way up to 300. It's just so many, or 200, so many different settings. But ride quality is pretty good. Of course, with these 22s, I can feel more on the steering wheel than I can through the vehicle. But ride quality is pretty good. But just love how fast this thing is. It's just so much fun to drive. Now, I wouldn't doubt this vehicle was mid six figures when it first came out and it shows, I mean, you just get so much for this amount of money in terms of power, I guess. And when I say so much for this amount of money, you get a lot for a lot of money. So let's just put it that way. But just the menacing sound from this vehicle with it being a 5.5 bi-turbo V8 from AMG, just impressive. And still fantastic ride quality. If you were to take this on a long cruise or even on this road here, it's just, it's comfortable. And we do have heated cooled seats, pretty adjustable seats. So having all that definitely helps. But it's a cool SUV, especially if you have to get a, a soccer mom car, but you want it to be just nasty. This is the way to do it. And you could probably get a similarly equipped Yukon or Escalade, save a little bit of money, have more room, but this, this does the part for what it's made for. Because I'm sure this would definitely smoke either one of those from a stop. And it just has that Mercedes Benz feel, that Mercedes Benz look, that AMG performance, you can't beat that. And I think this one will be priced a little under 60,000. I'll leave a link below in the description if you're interested in something like this, but even with 65,000 miles on it, Mercedes has come a long way in terms of reliability. It used to be if it had any more than 40,000 miles, just keep away from it. But especially as these cars are serviced more, they're serviced better, and they have more reliable parts than they used to, you'll see some of these hit 150, 170,000 miles. And when they start to really be cheap is when, kind of like Range Rovers, the suspensions are starting to go out and that's expensive to fix. A lot of people wanna stay away from them, specifically the turbos, but I mean, in my opinion, if you can afford it, it's worth it. But this will bring me to the end of my review of this pre-owned 2019 Mercedes-Benz GLS 63 AMG.